<laughs> like, come on. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Gay Life Television. You're watching my show, The Fantastic Show. I'm Davio Flavio, and I am the host of The Fantastic Show. So thank you all for joining me, and thank you so much for watching, um, everyone. And if you would like to follow us on Facebook, we're at Gay Life TV, and on Twitter, we're GLTV, just in case you guys are wondering. Okay, so we have a few news topics to discuss with you. Well, they're not really news topics, but um, uh, I had a few requests from people. There was uh, a guy who owns a website called the Joy Rising Network, and he had a request of me. He wants to know the evolution of the sex toy, so of, of like the dildo. So he asked me to do some research of the evolution <laughs> of the dildo, and I, I surprised myself because I didn't know a lot of these things. Okay, so at first, obviously, you know, they used sticks, you know, from trees, like they would actually go, and they would, you know, get the splinters all up in there, and, uh, that might be a reason, um, I, I don't know what kind, what kind of infection they would call that, like to have a splinter in your vagina or a splinter in your anal walls, but I can imagine that it's not very nice, and I'm sure it has some kind of uh, uh, name to it, it's kind of like a urinary tract infection. It's probably some type of infection, like a urinary, no, an analnary splinter infection. <laughs> that makes sense. And also, apparently, whenever they wanted to make anal beads, they would use little stones, and they would, uh, apparently it was polished marble, and they would use those to, um, poke it up in there. And, uh, they would also, of course, use vegetables, and I'm sure the the favorites were bananas, zucchini, or, um, you never know, some girls might like some eggplant up in there, but, um, maybe they use pumpkins, I, I have no idea, but you never know how loose someone is, but some people really like a double fist in there, so, you know, you have to keep that in mind. <laughs> but, okay, so, the vibrator, the vibrator was actually Apparently, it was invented by Cleopatra. She actually was, um, apparently she was having problems with hysteria or something, because apparently she was saying she was having hysteria, and this caused a whole outbreak of other women saying they had hysteria, and they wanted their doctors to masturbate them to get rid of this hysteria. So Cleopatra had this hysteria. And she decided to make a, um, it's called a gourd. It's kind of like a metal little, it's like a little metal thing that you can open and close and put objects on the inside. Well, she decided she would put bees on the inside. So whenever she, like, shook it up, the bees would get really angry and they would start buzzing around inside of her vibrator. And that is how she achieved her orgasm. So I thought that was very interesting. And uh, that followed by a lot of women, if you actually do some research, a lot of women went to their doctor to uh, cure their hysteria with uh, being masturbated by their doctor. So um, it was only women though. I, I don't understand why no men were, you know, treated for hysteria this way. I think it was kind of a cliche. I think they, their doctors just wanted to see their vagina and touch it. That's all I'm thinking, you know. Okay. And also, I found a little bit of research as well while I was researching that. I found the first condom was made of lamb intestines. It was actually a condom that was to be used over and over and over again. So you would use this condom probably about, you know, 50 times until it broke. So, I mean, 
it's kind of funny. I mean, but then again, back in the day, a lot of people weren't really worried about diseases as much as they are today. So uh, lamb intestines was a condom. So that is a bit strange. Also, there's oral pop rocks that you can buy. You put them in your mouth and the rocks pop while you're giving your partner oral pleasure. So you can, you know, put the pop rocks in your mouth and they'll pop all over your man's area down there and while you're on it with his with your mouth. And I think that would feel very interesting. I mean, I would probably not be opposed to trying that myself. So um, maybe Spencer's carries it, or I'm sure somewhere does. I'm sure Amazon carries it, to be honest. So, okay. So did you know homosexuality exists in over 450 species, and they only found that homophobia was being used in one of the species, and obviously that one is us. So they did all of this research, finding like cats, dogs. They found no like um, no anger towards the animals, no teasing, no like patting each other. They found none of that, but they found it in the human population. So. That's kind of funny. There's no real homophobia in animal land, but there is with us. So it's fun to know that. Okay, so 17 bizarre sex facts that you probably had no idea about. So I found these and my friend was really excited for me to talk about these because he really wanted to know a few bizarre sex facts. So I decided he, well, he kind of wanted he kind of said tonight should be a sex show because it's after Halloween, it's after the devil's holiday, so, you know, you might as well uh, make a, a, a show that's a little sexual, so I decided I would do that. Did you know, well, this one is not extremely sexual, but it is, it, you know, it's one of those. And did you know that one in ten European babies is conceived in an Ikea bed? I think that's kind of funny. I, I know I've been to Europe and there's a lot of Ikeas around there. There's a lot of those and uh, Ikea is extremely popular and I thought it was just popular in the USA, but no, it's much more popular in Europe. So it's a very European type of um, furniture and a lot, apparently a lot of Europeans are conceived in an Ikea bed. So did you know Alfred Kinsey, the author of Sexual Behavior in the Human Male. It, it was a book that was published in 1948. It uh, had a collection of, he had a, a collection of five million wasps. And um, he could insert a toothbrush into his penis, bristle end first. I don't understand this one at all. Um, well, we know he had a collection of five million wasps. Uh, I have no idea what relevance that has to do with anything in this little story here, but apparently he could insert a toothbrush into his penis, bristle, and first. So, I mean, can you imagine that? Sticking a toothbrush into your penis, bristle, and first. That would hurt so bad coming back out, but clearly, he had a very stretched urethra. I believe that's the word for it. But he had a very stretched one, apparently, as we can tell. Okay, so British spies stopped using semen as invisible ink because it began to smell if it wasn't fresh. That is disgusting. That is really gross to even know that they used it as invisible ink. And uh, so now we know that, you know, the British used to use sperm as a visible ink and it started to smell, so that's a little gross. Um, maybe they were using someone with, uh, I don't know, uh, gonorrhea or something. <laughs> maybe they were using some gonorrhea infected sperm. You never know because um, I don't think mine smells, to be honest. 
Okay, a single sperm contains 37.5 MB of DNA information. One ejaculation represents a data transfer of 15,875 GB, equivalent to the combined capacity of 62 MacBook Pros. So basically, every time you are, you know, ejaculating, the average is you're pouring out 62 MacBook Pro laptops. You're pouring out that much information, so that's how many babies you have inside of you. So that's kind of interesting to know. Oh, this one I found very, and, and this one's really cute. Okay, so uh, number five, the male fruit flies who have found to be rejected by the female flies tend to drink more significant, yeah, sig significantly more alcohol than those that have had a successful encounter. First of all, I'm wondering, like, I didn't know flies drank alcohol. I had no idea that they drank alcohol. Did you know flies drank alcohol? Because I had no idea. And I knew they only lived for about 15 days. And so that means they're finding alcohol in those 15 days. So we're going to go for a break right now, and we will return in just a minute. so much for watching the fantastic show with Davey Ophelavio, aka myself. Okay, so we are on a list currently about the 17 most bizarre sex facts that you probably had no idea about. So I'm on number six, and um, let's go. Number six. A female ferret will die in one year if she does not have sex. <laughs> I think that's kind of funny. Like, so why, why? I don't understand that. I need to do some more research on that. If anyone knows that, just please, you know, let us know. Send me an email at television. Let me know why a female ferret will die in one year if she does not get penetrated into her vagina. Okay, <laughs> that does not make sense to me. Okay. Okay, number seven. Seven Viagra tablets are sold every second. So go you, Ryra. You know, you're, you're working it. You're really working it. Okay, number eight. The German word for contraceptive is owing. Oh, really? How am I supposed to really um, say this word? It's, wow, there's probably about 36 letters in it. And, uh, well, the point of it is to say... By the time you finish saying it, it's too late. So that's kind of a little bit of irony for you. So number nine, the American Psychiatric Association listed homosexuality as a mental illness until 1973. So that means we were all mentally ill. We were all known as mentally ill until 1973. <laughs> so that's kind of interesting. We were all mentally ill. Number 10, the best-selling work of fiction of the 15th century was The Tale of the Two Lovers, an erotic novel by the man who later became Pope. He became a Pope. And uh, he was Pope Pius, or whatever it is. Pope Pius II. And I think that's kind of funny. He wrote a very sexual novel, and then he became a Pope. That's, that's some irony again right there. Number 11. A single human male produces enough sperm in two weeks to impregnate every fertile woman on the planet. I think that's really funny. Because, I mean, that's, that's just crazy. But I honestly think it's impossible because separating each of those chromosomes or whatever they are, you know, into each vagina in the world before they die, I don't think that's possible. It's not possible because sperm doesn't live that long outside of the human body anyway, so you would <laughs> outside of the butt. <laughs> so number 13, 
the founder of Match.com. This one's hilarious. This is real irony right here. The founder of Match.com, Gary Creeman. It sounds like semen. He lost his girlfriend to a man she found on Match.com. So she found a man on his website. So, I mean, he didn't even like, uh, you know, he should have researched all of those things that she was interested in and tried to hide every man that, you know, but apparently he, he clearly did not care. He didn't care. He didn't care to keep her interest. Okay, number 14. Gymnophoria is a sense that someone is mentally undressing you. Did you know that? It's called gymnophoria. So that's like a fear that, um, it's not, it might be a fear, but uh, it might not be. You could have like a fear of gymnophobia and, or something like that. Sorry, I have something in my nose. Ah, itchy. <laughs> okay, so number 15. A female chimpanzee is in a fit of passion, has the strength of six men. So basically, whenever a female chimpanzee is having sex, she is probably really forceful with her vagina. <laughs> so that's, uh, that's what I'm thinking. That's all I'm thinking there. Number 16. We only have two more to go. At the 2012 London Olympics, which lasted for 17 days, the athletes were provided with 150,000 free condoms, approximately 15 each. So basically, they were expecting these athletes to have sex 15 times while they were at the 2012 London Olympics. So, and you know, like not all those people are even going to have sex. So that means it will probably average out to maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe a thousand each. Because I mean, probably only 150 people are probably going to have sex. So, I mean, you know, people don't really have sex whenever they're going to be, you know, working out. They have to, you know, keep their strength. Okay, 17, the G spot was nearly called the Whipple Tickle after Professor Beverly Whipple, who coined the expression that we know today. So uh, that would be, I think that would be a lot cuter. I think I might start calling it the Whipple Tickle just for fun, because that sounds really cute. The G spot Whipple Tickle. I think that sounds really cute. Okay. I just think that's adorable. So, um, you know, we all come out. We all come out. So I'm actually looking for a few of you to share your coming out stories with me. And maybe you can send them to an email or something, just a quick thing. Like, make it less than a minute long. Send it to my email, davy.gaylifetelevision.com. I'll share it. I'll put it in a collaboration. That's if enough people do it. I said this on YouTube. I said it on, you know a page with like 15,000 people and a lot of people were interested but if, if any of you are interested let me know and uh we can talk about this um okay 10 signs that you're dating a loser someone wanted me to let them know if their boyfriend was a loser so i decided i would do some research and well, this is how you find out if your boyfriend is a loser. So, number one, he has the evil eye. So apparently if he just, you know, treats you like crap all the time, like with his evil eye, like if he's always getting angry with the little things you do, then you're dating a loser, apparently. Which, I mean, you know, he shouldn't get angry at every single thing you do. I mean, he should be accepting and, like, try to understand you, you know? You shouldn't, like, have to worry about, you know, constantly being on edge because he's going to think that, you know, something that you're doing is wrong. So, number nine. He has freaky friends. You know, I don't really necessarily agree with this one, but I didn't write this list, but apparently it says, you look forward to meeting his friends, but the fat, fat A gets shattered as you realize that they are not the coolest of people. And I use coal in here that uh, have a pulse. So basically a the lot of them, you know, are currently unavailable. And they just, you know, 
don't talk whenever they get together. Like, a lot of people say that they have a friend, and then you meet their friend, and you realize they have nothing in common, and then you realize that they're only friends just to say that they have friends. I think that's what this author is getting at. Number eight, jealousy is his middle name. So basically, anything you do, no matter what you do, he's going to be jealous of everything you do. If you go to a bar and someone is talking to you, He's going to be jealous of you, and he's not going to want you to ever talk to any man ever again. So, uh, jealousy is just a little name. Number seven, he has no life. <laughs> I don't really know what this means necessarily. Maybe it means he has no job, no car, no um, nothing, basically. Not even a cell phone. I think someone, you know, at least needs a cell phone to have a life. But if he doesn't have a cell phone or a job, you know, I would think that something's wrong there. And, uh, you know, it's prob you're probably dating a loser. So, you are his goal. So, um, I, don't, I don't necessarily agree with this one either. Number six, you are his goal. I mean, you are all he talks about, all he thinks about, which I think is a good thing. I think that's like, you know, all of the basic love stories in history are about basically based on that. And I think that's not always a terrible thing, but I guess if they're writing your name maybe all over a notebook and all over their walls and they're just like only talking about you to every single person and they have no desire to talk about anything else, then I would say that's a problem. So number five, he is a free agent for life. So basically this means uh, there is nothing wrong with being a single man ever, but only if being single is a choice and the man can get her his share of dates. But if you notice that you are the man's first love interest ever, and, um, you know, apparently that's not a good thing to this author here. So, uh, apparently if you're the first love, and I mean, if, if this person is like 45, you know, there's a problem there, because, I mean, he should have at least, you know, had some interest in someone else in those 45 years, you know? So, number four. He sees everything and everyone as a competition. Yes, yes, yes. Even the 97-year-old grandfather that lives across the street that wants to paint you a nice little painting and comes over and gives you a nice little painting. He sees that as competition. So that's not always great. I mean, you know, you have to have your own life. You can't live on walking on eggshells while this person is getting jealous of every single person and they're just thinking that everyone is a competition and you're just going to leave him for the next bagger at the grocery store and or the next... There's nothing wrong with being a bagger at a grocery store. Don't get me wrong with that. But the next um, person in prison, maybe they'll, they'll be jealous of you talking to someone who's in prison for life, which is, you know, a little impossible to date someone like that, you know? But they'll be jealous. So number three, he blames you for his exes. Well, I mean, I think that's, that's very wrong. If he blames you for his exes, you know, that was before you even met the person, like, and they're blaming you because you weren't around, like, around to make sure there were no exes, you know, that's, that's a little messed up. So, he should never blame you for any exes. <laughs> that's just strange. Okay, number two. He has no respect. Yes, I've experienced this many times. A lot of guys have no respect. They don't listen to you. Um, they have no respect for themselves. And they just kind of work at you, kind of like they nag you a lot. Because... That, that's totally disrespectful, and you're dating a loser. Okay, so number one, his sense of humor is non-existent. Well, I've seen pretty much this on both sides. Sometimes the person will have too much of a sense of humor, and they'll only want to talk about, you know, jokes 
and they won't really want to talk about anything ever. There you go. But it's also on the negative as well if their sense of humor is completely non existent. So, I mean, that's never good. It's never good to date someone who doesn't have a sense of humor. And, um, you know, it's just, it's not fun either because, I mean, you can never really enjoy your time with this person. I am looking up this um, next topic that I'm going to tell you. Uh, the most popular feature films. I right. know this is. I just wanted to take note to a few feature films that are out right now because I wanted to check them out myself. And these are apparently the top five that are, um, that are on the list. Okay, so one is The Hunger Games. Two is The Dark World. Three is Gravity. Four is Jackass Presents Bad Grandpa. And number five is Ender's Game. They all sound very depressing to me. So, I mean, obviously this year is a very depressing year in the movie release industry. So, uh, well, that just about wraps up our show today. Thank you all from LaundryClub.com. And thank you from Justin.tv. And also, thank you, Roku. Thank you all for watching us on Gay Life Television here. And thank you from watching, maybe you're watching on our website. Well, wherever you are in the world, thank you very much. And if you would like to call in sometime, you couldn't call in on this show because, it, uh, well, uh, if you would like to call in, it's 412-567-0381. But you have to call in whenever it's, the show is live. So... Um, the next live show, you can call in. All right, thank you so much for watching. Enjoy the rest of your evening.